Greetings of peace. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm your host. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe right now. We have an exciting show for you as always. Did you know that for centuries, Jews and Muslims lived together in peace? Now, I know many of you have been taught otherwise, or some people have actually been brainwashed to believe otherwise. But we have a chief rabbi of 30 years here in the Dean Show to give us the facts, not fiction, of the beautiful relationship that Jews and Muslims had and to this day are working together for good against a force that has hijacked Judaism and is hiding behind it and is tyrannically oppressing a certain group of people out there. We're going to be talking about this, again, facts not fiction, here on The D Show. Don't go anywhere. Very exciting show with my next guest. I'll be right back. This is The D, The D Show. This is the 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 How are you doing, Rabbi Weiss? How are you? How are you? Thank God. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank God. That's yes. right. Uh, we Greetings of peace. Thank you for being with us here on The Dean Show. And you heard me open the show. Time is short. But, you know, The Dean Show is out there clearing misconceptions, you know, helping to enlighten the minds. And, and one of the myths that many people have nowadays is that Muslims, you know, you know Muslims and Jews, you know, there, there was never a, any kind of... Uh, you know, collaboration, any goodness that Jews, you know, were persecuted by Muslims. They didn't live together in peace, you know what I mean? And that's why this um, state had to come into existence to protect the Jewish people. What mm -hmm. do you have to say about this? Uh, There's such a, a, a crucial issue. It's such a, it's really, we, I pray to the Almighty first that He should bestow upon me His truth, His wisdom, uh, that I may be worthy of conveying His message and so sanctify His name and bring peace to the world, amen. And it's, it, it, in such a short time to be able to uh, uh, express all the issues here, to explain all the issues here will be very hard, but we'll try with God's help just to at least shine a light on what we're having here. Yeah. Um, it is true, it is a fact that Jews lived and flourished in the Muslim and Arab lands, and anybody who would like to could have see for themselves go to uh, uh, Tunisia, Morocco, um, Iran, Egypt and, um, uh, and uh, Yemen and all the lands there and prior to any human rights groups to protect uh, prior to the, you can go you can find the synagogues uh, that were there till recent uh, recent uh, times and some of them still exist in Iran they still are, they are there people are practicing the religion there the Jewish religion uh, but um, till recently till Zionism came about Jews flourished as distinctly religious Jewish communities, and they weren't massacred. On the contrary, they went to these Arab and Muslim lands to escape persecution uh, from the Crusades, from the Inquisition, and from many other trials and tribulations, and, the, um, and even World War II. Uh, the Arab and Muslim lands opened their hearts, opened their lands, and uh, provided a safe haven and a gracious hospitality for the Jewish people. Again, clearly, they, we, we have different religion, um, and yet, uh, we, were, we were accepted in these Muslim and Arab lands. We believe in one God, and we were accepted. We have different ways of serving God, but yet, as I, they, we were respected. And the, even the Muslim religion requires of that, uh, of uh, the, uh, the Muslim people, to, to, to provide protection and hospitality. And they did uh, carry that out. And that's clear. Nobody could refute this fact. Um, although, unfortunately, Zionism and the Zionist, uh, Zionists pr try constantly to vilify the Muslim people and try to recreate a, 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 a scenario of as if we have some deep embedded religious conflict and, and hate between Jews and Muslims. And that is so deplorable, despicable, and really it's, there's no words, it's a Nakba. 
And let me try to explain. Really, people have to understand, you know, I threw in word Zionism, and this, what, what are we talking about here? Yeah, so, what, what is it? Most people are ignorant now when you hear Zionism. You know, what's the difference between Judaism and Zionism? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with God's help, the Judaism is a religion. It's a, it is the covenant that Jewish people made some 3,000 years ago on Mount Sinai uh, to be subservient to God and to follow the laws of the Torah, 613 commandments in the Torah. We, in the Torah is full of laws that are replete. Some, um, a large segment of them have to do with keeping Sabbath, kosher, things that pertain from um, us as human beings to the Almighty. And then there is a large segment of the Torah that pertains to that one should not steal and one not kill and to be compassionate and so forth. Um, it's all, there's a many, many commandments, it's all part and parcel of the Torah. In fact, uh, we can encompass it as one of the com commands, one of the um, statements is that, um, that, that in Hebrew it says, just as God is compassionate, you should be compassionate. So basically that is what Judaism is. Zionism is a mere hundred odd years. It was a movement of Jews who were estranged from the Torah, who detested the Torah and tried to transform this Judaism into Erzatz Judaism, a new Judaism which is pure ma nationalism, material concept of having an army, uh, 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 Olympic team, and to be a nation proud amongst other nations, totally removing in its essence uh, the concept of godliness, removing God from, uh, from the equation. And they will allow religion, they say, or, they, or how far they do or don't. But they are, have hijacked the name Israel. They've hijacked the whole uh, um, uh, Judaism to legitimize and to put a facade of that it's kosher, that it's uh, godly, what they're doing, when in truth it contradicts Judaism and it's totally forbidden. And I'll explain why with God's can, can you, before we go to break, so can you be, a, a, can you be Jewish and an atheist? Of course not. It's ridiculous. It's the Judaism is belief in God. That's what it's all about, a covenant with God. It's not a nationalism. It's not some type of a country that you can be a, a Democrat, you can be a, a, a Marxist or something. Well, Zionism exactly, is exactly that. They were Marxists and they claimed to be Democrats and they proudly claim that, they're, that they're, you don't have to be a pra practicing Jew and, and, and to be a good Jew as long as you're supporting the state. So that uh, in, of itself shows the uh, heresy and the blasphemy in what this is. But there's much more to what we're talking of um, the issue of Zionism. And I would you really have to elaborate a little bit on what this is, uh, on, on what Zionism, how in every facet it rebels against God and it, um, it, it, is, uh, uh, it, it is rooted in heresy and in, in, in non-belief in God and in doing evil, basically. Uh, before we go to break, just one more thing. It really touched a lot of the hearts when people have heard you say that Jews and Muslims at one point when they were living before this, this whole nationalistic, atheistic movement, Zionism, is it safe to say that's what it is, an atheistic, nationalistic movement? Most you, certainly. Yeah. So now before that, uh, they were actually babysitting each other's kids. There's so if no you're leaving a kid with someone, your own you know, flesh and blood, your, your, your joy of your heart, you know, That's this is not your precious, enemy. That's the most precious uh, 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 um, possession that a person has. It's what God gave a person. And Jews and Muslims will yeah, leave their they, kids they to They live in the same courtyards. We have many Jews who are alive today, to, to thank God. And they lived in the old courtyards in, in old Jerusalem. To testify and, to and this. And they could testify this and, uh, to this, uh, uh, both from the Arab and Muslim people and the Jewish communities. Yeah. I have many colleagues around. We're going to take a break. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to talk about a lot more here in the Dean Show with Rabbi Weiss. Don't go anywhere. Misconception. Muslims are terrorists. This is by far the biggest misconception of Islam, given unfairly by stereotyping and the public image that the media gives. Has anyone else noticed how when a specific group of people attack another group of people, it is labeled as a hate crime? But when a Muslim opens fire on anybody, it is quickly regarded as terrorism? Many political dictators and officials or extremist groups use the name of Islam as a strategy to garner followers and attention when many of their practices go against the true basis of Islam. The media has also portrayed Islam as a cult or a club where if you join you become a terrorist and that is now part of your agenda. However, all over the world people practice Islam in the true form and use it as a way of life. There are many verses in the Quran that go against the idea of terrorism. Some of these verses include Fight the way of Allah, those that fight you, but do not transgress limits, for God does not love transgressors. This basically means do not fight except in self-defense, and even in doing so, do not go beyond defense. Another verse states, if they seek peace, 
then you seek peace. Which means, do not attack people for no reason or kill innocent people. There is nowhere in Islam, whether it be in the Quran or the teachings of Muhammad, that promotes the killing of innocent people. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show with Rabbi Weiss, Rabbi of 30 years. We're talking about clearing up you know, some of the misconceptions, the myths, and many people, again, we are talking about Zionism, what this actually is. We're clearing up what Judaism is and the difference between the two. Please yeah. continue from there. Oh, with the help of the Almighty, um, as I was saying earlier, um, Judaism is subservience to God and to, to strictly adhere to the laws of the Torah that God made a covenant with us on Mount Sinai. We must uphold the Torah. That is what Judaism is. Uh, nothing less, nothing more. That's what it is, uh, uh, Judaism. And um, Zionism is this new, relatively new movement because it's a hundred odd years, while well, Judaism is 3,000 years. And what it is, a uh, total transformation into nationalism. And um, in, first of all, it's rooted in heresy, in blasphemy. What it states is uh, that we have to take a gun to protect us. Where was God by the Second World War? Although Zionism started before the Second but they, they say we have, we have to protect ourselves. And they, they, they constantly harp on this issue in that uh, our only salvation is with the gun. Um, and totally ignoring the fact that which our salvation as a Jew, what a Jew means is to look to God for protection, to, to understand that God rules the world. But there's much more than that. Um, Judaism clearly states in the uh, prophecies uh, when, that we were living in the Holy Land. Um, at the time, uh, there was King David and then King Solomon built a temple. And then there was, a, a, there was the prophets, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, all of them. And they kept on warning the Jews that they have to be on this high level of holiness. And if not, they will be expelled from the land. And this happened with the destruction of the temple 2,000 odd years ago. And um, uh, at that time, King Solomon had um, wrote in a prophecy in the book called Shir Hashirim, the Song of Songs, uh, he wrote that the Jews are under three oaths. One, that since we were uh, expelled and sent into exile, again, clearly as a Jew believes it, not because of our physical lacking, only because, our, because it was a decree of God, because of our spiritual lacking. Therefore, God saw, said, put us on the three oaths. One, not to return in mass, in large numbers to the Holy Land. Jews were living as private individuals under different, under Turkey or whoever it was. That, the Ottoman Republic, that was, it's all fine. But to, cre to, to in return in mass, that is forbidden. If, um, Secondly, we are not to rebel against any nation. We're not to make any attempt um, to, to... We have to be loyal citizens in every country, pray for the, for the uh, well-being of the country that we're residing in. Thirdly, not to uh, make any attempt to end exile. So this Jews respected for 2,000 years. We went through the Inquisition, the Spanish Inquisition. We went through so many trials and tribulations. And yet the Jews had the opportunity. There was rich times, the golden age of Jews. They had money to buy a piece of land, and they didn't because it is expressly forbidden. Meaning that even if it would have been in a desolate land, uninhabited, Jews respected the fact that we should not buy one piece of land to make Jewish sovereignty. This was respected for 2,000 years. Now the Zionists came and they created a state ignoring totally and laughing at what the teachings of the Torah and ridiculing the ones who follow this, this belief in the Torah, which is pure, the 101 of Judaism. And they said, we, where was God to protect us? They, 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 they simply uh, uh, um, uh, discredit God and the Torah, and therefore they said, we're going to make a state and, and to, as supposedly for protection or whatever reason. At, at the same time, this is not enough, but the fact that they made their state in a land that was inhabited, it wasn't a desolate land, it wasn't a, 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 an uninhabited land, it was so inhabited. That's, that's a myth there. It was yeah, a they used to say that mantra was it was a land without a people, a people without a land. So now they decided to create this state in a land that was inhabited, the majority, the vast majority were Muslim. Then there was a Christian community and there was a Jewish community. All three of these uh, communities were uh, anti 
Zionists because the Jews were, were in almost its entirety, they were the religious communities. And this Zionism came from Europe with the backing of um, uh, Britain and so forth, and they decided to create the state. So it, it, it really it breached the laws and the commands of God in every facet. Again, we are forbidden to have a state, and on top of that, it's clear the Torah is replete, as I've said, with do not kill, do not steal, um, um, and, and to show there's a com the command also that we have, to, we have to show a gratitude for people that have done good to us. And the Muslim countries were the ones, and the Arab countries were the ones who provided a home for Jews. And now to go and vilify these people and, and claim that they hate Jews and they're anti-Semites and so forth, this is so repugnant by us. It is such a tragedy and humiliation for us because not only are they creating this state, they're, and, 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 but they're doing it by vilifying the people that were good to us. So in every, and they're using my name. They've hijacked the name Israel and the, all our uh, uh, symbols, the menorah, the, the star of David, and, and, so, and, and they put on a facade of religion. They claim it's a Jewish state. They claim it's a, um, the state of Israel, and they have these rabbis, so-called rabbis, who they, who they were able to get. There's always an, a bad apple in, uh, in a barrel. They were able to get a few. We have tens of thousands of rabbis we've had, especially before the Second World War, um, and they were able to glean a few for a few dollars or whatever they did, and they were able to get a few, and they used these and made them big, and, they, and, and, and these people, um, as a lawyer, would be able to, you know, twist the case, a, 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 a gifted lawyer. So these rabbis, although they know Torah, some of them, some of them don't, but they made, what they do is they simply um, uh, twisted the Torah. And in the Talmud, in the Torah, it warned us that they were just as like, you're not, a Jew is not allowed to eat a worm. It's just like we're not allowed to eat pig. So there's a, a, stay, a, saying, a saying in the Talmud, I, there's 150 ways to prove that you can eat a worm. Although it's clear in the Torah, we're not allowed. It's a verse in the Torah. In other words, they're trying to say that you can twist anything if you'd like, if you want to twist something. So they've taken these supposed rabbis, they made a rabbinate, a chief rabbi, Rabbi, and it's all a farce, and it's a facade, and they, and it's just representing this uh, hypocrisy called the state of Israel, mm -hmm. which is uh, totally non-religious. They, 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 they detest religion. They made it. They, they call it a democracy, not a religion. And so, in every facet, this is contradictory to Judaism and all the rabbinical authorities. With God's help, will show you, <coughs> especially the, the, the chief rabbis of Palestine. You, now, you said uh, chief rabbi at that time. Before this was formed, right. we went to the United Nations, and what did yes, you do? Yes, and, and we have a book called Traditional Torah Opposition to Zionism. And in 1947, the year before the State of Israel was ratified, and the chief rabbi of Palestine turned to the United Nations. We have all the, the pictures of it. We have all the, um, 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 what he said, and just one statement. We furthermore, this is Rabbi Dushinsky, uh, the chief rabbi of Palestine, mm -hmm. of the Ashkenazi community. And there was the Sephardic rabbis also. They, and he said, we furthermore wish to express our definite opposition to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. This was a declaration before the United Nations, July 16th, 1947. Four months later, when they saw they were being ignored, he again turned to the, uh, he sent a communication to the Secretary General of the United Nations on Lake Success, and he said, um, the Jewish Orthodox community called Ayyad Haredi, this God-fearing community, because the others yeah. are not, he said, of Jerusalem comprising 60,000 souls, objects to the plea of including Jerusalem in the Jewish state or its residents becoming automatically citizens of the Jewish state. Our community de demands that Jerusalem be an inter international zone under your protection. With full autonomy to residents, we free citizens. Um, so what, basically, what's this? Uh, we have to go to break. So right. if somebody wants to Google his name, uh, Rabbi, uh, uh, his name was Rabbi um, uh, Yosef Tzvi Dushinsky, chief authority of the Jews chief, at that time. He represented the Jewish community, and um, the, 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 you can in, even in the United Nations we have the pictures where he sat with them, and it's in the United Nations document. He wasn't the only one. Across the board, we have the rabbis speak out, 130 years of religious Jewish opposition to Zionism, the greatest your Torah authority. Yeah, your grandparents were actually Holocaust survivors. My grandparents were killed in Auschwitz. My father yeah. escaped, went to, to Italy, came to the United States, and he was actually a follower of uh, the, one of the greatest Torah authorities in, in Europe. Um, uh, and his name was, um, um, the, they called the Minkacher from a city called Munkach, yeah. and uh, Rabbi Shapiro, um, and he was a, a great, um, a great Torah and he was most, one of the most vociferous against Zionism. But uh, we have many, like the Rabbi Yosef um, Yisrael Meir Cohen, called the Chavetz Chaim, who wrote. Everybody recognized him as the, the greatest, uh, uh, like one of the greatest codifiers of Jewish laws before the war. 
and in every community they recognized him. And he said, he said, he said, I'm quoting him. Therefore, every man, the Zionists are dead limbs of our people, which will cause the entire body to rot. In Omer and Amasul Melech, paragraph 16. So this these, is, these are, we're going to take a break, but these the, are all the, chief. Uh, these are all the uh, greatest rabbis, leaders, greatest the leaders, leaders of, of the, the Jewish in, people. In its entirety, there was very. You can count on the hand the, the Zionists when they came to be. Or in Europe and all in, in, in the other communities in Palestine, the Jewish communities threw them out. They, they, they totally uh, um, ostracized them. They didn't, mm. Zionism was not uh, uh, acceptable in any manner, shape, or form in Judaism. Here with uh, Rabbi Weiss, we're going to take a, a break. Peace activists calling for peace and Muslims and Jews working together for peace. We'll be right back here on The Dean Show. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show with Rabbi Weiss. Now, uh, usually when people come out and they say anything, uh, they'll get a backlash and people say, look, you're anti-Semitic, right? Or if even a rabbi such as yourself, and we see right now, we're seeing pictures with, I think there was like 50,000 Jews uh, many rabbis, you know, you can see the pictures right now coming out, and this is in New York, and they're staunchly against this movement that has been responsible for terrorism and terrifying people, innocent people, children, and whatnot. So what do you say? What do you have to say when someone, you know, uses these things, right. these, these, uh, these, these nasty words? Yeah, I'm happy that you brought this up because the, unfortunately the world thinks that the more the Jewish you are, the more religious you are, the more Zionist you are. In fact, it is just the opposite. And anybody, if they will give, uh, take the effort, they will see that invariably, whether it is in Jerusalem, in Al-Quds, in, 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 in wherever there is a very religious community, in Stamford Hills, in London, which is the most religious Jewish community, or in New York, if you just across from Manhattan, it's called Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Uh, and um, and I can go on and on. Wherever around the world, the most, the more religious, the more anti-Zionist. Because as I've explained, it's Zionism is totally contradictory. It's it's really antithetical to Jews. It's just the two cannot meet. It's impossible. Judaism is subservience to God. Zionism is rebelling against God in every facet. Now the Zionists, being that they don't have the uh, the, the godly uh, uh, fear of God and the, uh, the, uh, the this, uh, morals of, of given by God of how one should uh, live his life. Therefore, they have no compunctions with using the Ju Judaism as a facade and a, a, a stick to intimidate others that they, they wave the, the, the Bible and they use this emotional music. Oh, we were 2,000 years in exile and now we finally got back the land. We're a continuation of King David. And to us, this, we could vomit from this listening to this because it's so despicable because everybody, if you would just follow their lives, they, they, in, 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 the the whole state of Israel is uh, breaches all the Ten Commandments and everything of the Torah. They don't um, keep. They desecrate the Sabbath. They 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 um, uh, they, they 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 have non-kosher foods. That they have pigs and and um, and every they they, they um, dig up graves for archaeological purposes. They um, and they and I go on and on. They do forced autopsy. But not only that, they brutally beat the Jews who are religious Jews. They detest religious Jews. Um, um, I, I just may say a statement. Uh, well, Theodor Herzl, in, 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 in traditional Torah opposition to Zionism, uh, Theodor Herzl um, uh, wrote that the solution, and I have this in, in this, uh, we have some of their statements. He, he said, um, I'll quote him uh, in his own diary, uh, the way to solve the problem of anti-Semitism is to speak to the head priest of Vienna to get an appointment with the Pope to make a mass conversion of all the Jews of Austria to Catholicism. That was his solution. It should be done on a Sunday in the middle of the day with music and pride publicly. We are the last generation that held on to the faith of our forefathers. Jews gave their lives for their religion throughout the, uh, the history. And he says, oh, we'll just drop it with music and, and pride. And he himself carried out his... He had one son and he announced publicly that he's not circumcising his son, the thing that Jews gave their lives for. There was one, jo Zev Jabotinsky, also one of the fathers of the Irgun, Lechi, as, uh, uh, there was a prime minister called Begin. He was his mentor. Everybody knows him who follows Zionism. And he wrote in an article in 1919 in what Palestine. Book is, what book is this now This again? is again a traditional Torah opposition to Zionism. Uh, Zionism. It's historic documents so like on uh, nkusa.org. You can find... Uh, NK That's USA, your website. That's our website. You can find... And he wrote and, uh, openly in a newspaper in, in the, called the Chadash's Hearts, that means the news of the land, 
um, he wrote in uh, 1919, um, uh, in the national home, we will announce that those Jews, those Jews who have on themselves the rust of exile and they refuse to shave off their beards and earlocks, payas it's called, will be second-class citizens and will not have the right to vote. Now, imagine that. If an Arab person would say this, a Muslim country would say that, they, they, the Zionists would be all over them and say, how dare you do it? And they're the protectors of J the, the Jewish people around the world. This is their hypocrisy, what they are. But, um, but, but not only that, the Jewish people, we're never militant. We are, we're not armed. We don't carry arms. And yet when we have all, uh, simply to voice our opposition to the Zionist occupation of Palestine and what they're doing, we have demonstrations. Now, who are, who are these uh, people? These are rabbis? These, uh, Jew, some, Jew practice? some of them are rabbis. Some of them are laymen. Just now, Jews. who's be, are these? Uh, these are, are these, Zionists. These are, are the these police. Muslims beating them? These are the Zionists. They're police. They're soldiers. So Zionists are beating they're them. They're brutally beating them. We have... We have reams and reams of pictures that can go to our site, NKUSA, and there's links. You can see, we have, as you've mentioned, we have demonstrations that never get covered because of their intimidation around the world that you're anti-Semitic if you oppose them. So uh, newspapers fear the fear of, uh, to, to, dare, to dare speak up against Zionism or to show any uh, uh, um, uh, sympathy for the Palestinian cause. We, here we have tens of thousands of Jews when Netanyahu came to visit President Obama. We have, as you said, in New York, we have, we have every year we have many times demonstrations, and they're speaking, they're, they're tens saying of thousands of Jews, yeah. saying that we are against the existence the mere existence of this rebellion against God called the Zionist State of Israel. We don't accept it. It's unacceptable to God. Not we don't accept it. It's unacceptable because we are Jews. Because we are Jews, we, we, we oppose the existence of the State of Israel. We, we uh, sympathize. We cry with the people of Palestine for the, in their suffering. And what happens in Palestine? This is what happens in Palestine. We get brutally beaten. These are Israeli soldiers. This is what they do day in and day out. We get arrested. We get brutally beaten. We get, our leaders are were assassinated. And, 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 and um, this is the chief rabbi of Palestine today. Um, in, in, uh, but nothing to do, again, with the Zionist rabbinate or that chief rabbi, which is a facade. It's just window dressing in, that they should be able to carry out whatever they need to do. Rip up olive orchards. Um, 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 they, so they have a sign by the, their rabbis. Their rabbis may have no be knowledgeable, but that doesn't mean it's neither here nor there. It's nothing because they are not uh, upholding the Torah. They are not only not rabbis, but they are not practitioners of Judaism. They've excluded themselves from, the Ju from Judaism. And, um, and we have so many, um, again, people could see pictures of the tens and tens of thousands of people demonstrating these pictures are not big enough, but people go to the site, whether it is in Washington, whether it is in New York, whether it is in, um, in Palestine, mostly, or in London, around the world we demonstrate. We, we also go, we as Jews who are true to Judaism, we went to Gaza. We, we met, we, we go to Muslim countries now, because we, our, our, it's a requirement, as the chief rabbi of Palestine, Rabbi Teitelbaum, said, we are required to let the world know that these Zionists and their state does not speak for the Jewish people, and they are not um, um, in any way have the right to use Judaism to oppress, to steal the land from the Palestinian people. Uh, these people who are good to us, and we babysat each other's children, we live together, they have no right to steal from them. The Torah doesn't permit you to steal. And here we went to Gaza, we brought, um, uh, uh, just recently we sent an ambulance, we couldn't go recently to, um, because of the, what's happening. We usually go through Egypt, but unfortunately what's happening. But we sent from Norway, we, um, and together with the people from Norway, we brought an ambulance. We went to twice, they'll be after the attacks on Gaza two, a few years ago. And here we're meeting, we're non-political, so we're good with all the factions, with President Abbas and with the, um, and the, the Prime Minister. This is meeting with Prime Minister uh, Ismail Khania in, in, uh, in Gaza. And we meet with, in, and we went to the Iran and to, um, uh, to Sheikh Karadawi and, and all the people and the kings and the leaders, thank God, to tell them that the people should understand that there is not, religion isn't the issue. The Zionists wants to confuse to make it that there's a religious conflict. Nothing to do with religion. The, on the contrary, the Muslims and the Arab people were for us our friends and our patrons, the ones who protect us and provide a safe haven. And they should not be full, full, full victim of this evil movement of Zionism. With God's help, if you will remove this impediment to peace, Zionism, 
a new, a relatively new ideology, so a hundred more years, than the Jews and Muslims and uh, Christians were living for hundreds and hundreds of years, and it was never a problem. We could just remove that little drop of sand that was thrown in the person in the, in the eye. You can't. That drop, that Zionism, remove that impediment to peace. It, and, and don't be confused that you have to remove this religion, these people, followers of practice of religion. The world, unfortunately, confuses these issues. And that is where the problem is. And that's why there's no light at the end of the tunnel, because they feel that they have to force um, this Zionism that it should continue. Remove it, then you won't have to put in billions of dollars for building walls and everything because we can live together as history so beautifully attests to the fact that we live together. I'd like to thank you. We're out of time. We have to go. Moving forward, how can people, if they want to get, you know, sincere people out there who want to know the truth, but there's a lot of confusion over this, how can they get more informed? Well, with God's help, they, again, um, uh, they can go to our site, www.nkusa.org. And as um, in, uh, um, in November, um, um, nkusa.org. And uh, there's a lot of sites, links. They can go to that. We urge people, um, don't call it a Jewish state. Call it a Zionist state. You shouldn't get, fall into the trap of being referred to as And we urge people both to pray to the Almighty, who ultimately is the one who brings the results, and do not be silent, don't be, do not be intimidated. Stand up for the people of Gaza and Palestine uh, to urge the leaders, just as South Africa was uh, stopped from, from the apartheid. We can, with God's help, we will be able to, by for, uh, having and uh, putting pressure on our politicians that they should understand, they have to stop this injustice. And with, we plead with people, ha, invite us and let us know of conferences around the world um, and, and, and bring us there. We do not charge honorariums. We have, it's our godly obligation to educate the world to understand that there is a way out of this terrible, terrible Nakba, this tragedy, simply by removing this impediment to peace. God helps speedily, peacefully, uh, and soon in our days. And then we can live together in peace and harmony. In peace. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you for, much for being with us here on the Dean Show, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. And that was Rabbi Weiss. As you can see, Jews and Muslims lived. It's a fallacy that they didn't live together in peace, that they actually babysat each other's kids. And the rabbi had mentioned apartheid. Now, I'm going to end with this quote from Nelson Mandela, where he mentioned that, stated that apartheid is a crime against humanity. Israel has deprived millions of Palestinians of their liberty and property. It has perpetuated a system of gross radical discrimination and equality. It has systematically incarcerated and tortured thousands of Palestinians contrary to the rules of international law. It has, in particular, waged a war against a civilian population, in particular, children, in particular, innocent children. Get informed, get enlightened, and don't be someone who's just blindly hating and connect with God. Connect with your creator. Ask him for the guidance. He'll make it clear. We'll see you next time on The Dean Show. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us on the social media tools. And we'll see you next time. Until then, peace be unto you.